Now, human nervous system. First of all, we will just lay an outline to know how it is. Human nervous system. It is divided into two parts. One is the central nervous system, C N S. Means central nervous system. And second is the P N S. That is the peripheral. nervous system central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system now why do we call it as the central nervous system because cns it is always present in the central line of the body in the mid of the body it is located now cns central nervous system it is the brain and the spinal cord now this peripheral nervous of the nervous system that is present away from the central line of the body and it is two types that is the voluntary system and the involuntary system voluntary system means that is under our control involuntary not under our control voluntary nervous system it consists of the spinal nerves and the cranial nerves spinal nerves are those nerves that arise from the spinal cord and there are 31 pairs of the spinal nerves and cranial nerves that arise from the brain they are twelve pairs so these spinal nerves and cranial nerves they originate from the spinal cord and the brain and innervate the different organs of the body now this involuntary system it again originates from the brain and spinal cord but it consists of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves what do you mean by this now both these sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves they work in an antagonistic way opposite way suppose one of the nerves they help in the dilation of your pupil your pupil will dilate the other parasympathetic when the work is over they will help in the constriction of your pupil now to understand it in a better way let me show you one chart now see in this chart you will locate the brain over here this brain is present in the center of the body see here this is the medulla part brain spinal cord is running from the brain in the center the spinal cord is there so this is in the central nerve and you will see that so many nerves they are originating from the brain so many brain nerves are coming then so many nerves they are coming from the spinal cord so what are these these are the cerebral nerves and the spinal nerves they innervate different organs of your body now this is a layout so now what we will do is we will explain the cns that is the central nervous system
cerebrum. Number three is the diencephalon. We will do them individually. Now midbrain. This midbrain it consists of again two parts: cerebral peduncles and corpora quadrigemina. Cerebral peduncles and the corpora quadrigemina. Cerebral peduncles are the fiber tracts. This hindbrain, this hindbrain, it again consists of three parts. That is the cerebellum, pons. vertebrae and the medulla oblongata so there are three parts cerebellum pons and medulla oblongata now we will do first the these three different parts of the four brain separately Yes. First of all, let us do the olfactory lobes. These olfactory lobes. Now, children, to make you understand in a better way, I have got a model of the brain. Now, these are the parts of the brain externally. First of all, before we do the internal structure, let me tell you about the external structure. Now you know that your brain it is about fourteen hundred grams in weight. Fourteen hundred grams in weight, and it is present in the skull region. This skull or the cranium, skull or cranium, it protects your brain. Inner to the skull, there are three layers. Which are known as the meninges. What is there in the meninges? There is the cerebrospinal fluid. Cerebrospinal fluid is there that protects the three mem. This brain, three membranes are there. This meninges, they again of three types: dura mater. Pyramidal and arachnoid mantle. These are the three layers of the brain, and in this, the cerebrospinal fluid is there. This fluid it protects your brain from shocks and injuries. So it is like a you can say cushion in which your nervous tissue is well protected. So this is the cranium meninges, in which is protecting your brain. Now, before we that, as I told you, brain is divided into three parts: forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. So first of all, let us see what is the cerebrum, olfactory lobes, and diencephalon. Now, if I show you, this is the model of the brain. From front, it looks like this. This is your forebrain, midbrain is in the center, and hindbrain is at the back. Now, this pinkish area that you will see, what is it? It is all the part of this cerebrum. This cerebrum, it is divided into two hemispheres. They are called as the cerebral hemisphere. 
Now you can see these two hemispheres. They are called as the cerebral hemispheres. They are separated by a fissure that is called as the cerebral fissure. What is it called? Cerebral fissure. Now here you can see lot of convulsions, raised areas of the brain. The brain is present in a very dense intercatly manner, intermingled manner. Th these raised areas, they are known as the gyri. And the areas where they are in depressions, they are known as the sulci. Plural, singular is gyrus. Similarly, singular is sulcus. So, depressions are known as the sulcus and the raised areas they are known as the gyrus. So, these are the cerebral fissure. It is divided into two hemispheres and cerebral, it is the largest part of the brain. Most of the thinking, it takes place in the cerebral region and we also call cerebrum as the seat of intelligence. We also call the cerebrum as the seat of intelligence because all the nervous tissue it is densely present in it. Now you can see here the olfactory lobes. Can you see these yellow colored structures? This yellow colored structures. This yellow colored structures they are called as the olfactory lobes. They send the reflex actions, auditory reflections from the auditory receptors to the cerebrum, to the forebrain. Now, this cerebrum, if you see this, it is made into different lobes. Cerebrum is divided into four lobes. Number one is the frontal lobe. Number two is the parietal lobe. Number three is the temporal lobe. Number four is the occipital lobe. So cerebrum is divided into cerebrum is divided into four lobes: frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and the occipital lobe. Now this frontal lobe it is present in the front, as I have shown you. This frontal lobe. It is present in the front region here. Frontal lobe. This is mostly for thinking, reasoning, and mostly for the muscular activities of the body. Muscular activities, thinking. Number one is the sensory areas. 
Number two is the association areas. And third is the motor areas. Sensory areas. Now, what is the role of the sensory areas? All information from the sense organs is received in the brain in these sensory areas. From all sense organs, whether it is ear, whether it is nose, whether it is skin, whatever we receive the stimulus, that all the stimulus it is received by these sensory areas of the brain. Now when this information it is collected over here from all the sense organs, this is passed to the association areas. Now what are these association areas do? They just interpret this information. Here thinking is proceeded and decision is made about how to respond. Alright? And then this information is sent to the motor areas in the motor neurons. And these motor areas, motor neurons, they will go to the muscles or your effector organs that will work according to their instructions. Now for this to understand I will give you a simple example. Now suppose children you are sitting in an examination hall. You at the beginning you will get the question paper. What you will do? You will read the question paper. Who will read? With your eyes. Your eyes will read the question paper. Then the eyes after reading the question paper, after reading the question, they will send a message through sensory nerve impulse to the sensory areas of your brain. Alright? So when you read, your ears are also listening. Sometimes you whisper. Or say, all the reflexes, they come over here. So sensory areas, they send the information to the association areas. And another reflex section here operating is let it be the starting of the bell. The bell rings and you start reading both this information it goes to the sensory areas and it goes to the association areas. Now association areas, here thinking proceeds. Here whatever the question is passed to them, they will think of the answer to that in your brain. You will just think of the answer, what is going to be there and then this answer is sent to the motor areas of your brain and these motor areas, they will send a message to your muscles of the hands and then your hands, they will write the answer accordingly. Have you followed? They will write your answer accordingly. This is how the information is interpreted. So, then is the third part is the diencephalon. Diencephalon, it is present in the interior of the cerebrum. Now, this diencephalon, it is epithalamus. It is the roof of the diencephalon, which is called as the epithalamus. Then there are the thalamus. They are the sides. Then it is the hypothalamus. That is the floor of the diencephalon. Epithalamus roof, thalamus side, hypothalamus. You know that hypothalamus, it is a major gland. This epithalamus, it also controls the various auditory reflexes. Similarly, thalamus, they have been conducting the Pulses to the forebrain. This main is the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus, it also controls the pituitary gland of your body. It is the master endocrine gland. Now, after the diencephalon, let us come to the midbrain. Midbrain, as I told you, it consists of Cerebral peduncles are the fiber traps that connect the brain 
brain and the corpora cordigamina they also control the sight and auditory reflexes of the body auditory reflexes of the body now then is the hind brain hind brain as i told you number 1 is the cerebellum cerebellum is the second largest part of the brain and it consists of two hemispheres that is the cerebral hemisphere cerebral hemisphere they control the movements that help in coordination of your body like walking in a straight line when you do any movement that is all controlled by the cerebral hemisphere so sorry it is the cerebellum no cerebellum so cerebrum cerebral it is cerebellum cerebellum hemisphere walking walking in a straight line riding a bicycle for that is controlled by the cerebellum then is the pons pons it helps in the regulation of respiration and third is the medulla medulla part it controls the involuntary movements of your body like sneezing coughing salivation all these involuntary movements are controlled by the medulla oblongata thank you